Hello, everyone. Welcome to another short and sweet. My name is Jesse Guzman. I'm a consultant here at Concentris. Uh, today's video, I'm going to show you something that is, for all intents and purposes, super simple. Uh, inventory adjustment imports using the import tool, CSV uploads. And I thought I'd create this one because I think many people have been there. It is the weekend. You just finished a fiscal inventory count and you've got to get in there and make adjustments to the system. Uh, so you can open back up and start shipping orders on Monday. And of course, you're starting to get errors. Uh, today's file, today's sample will be a very straightforward uh, single file upload with no lots or serial numbers or any of that. We'll have a follow-up short and sweet showing you how to do a multi-file uh, inventory adjustment, but this is going to be a pretty basic one, and I'm going to show you some little tricks and, and tips that I've got for setting up your file and for loading the, uh, the import. So first things first, most of you, if not all of you, if you're not using some kind of WMS or something like that, um, is... Uh, it's going to be doing your inventory or having your account in some sort of Excel file, which is not a bad thing because then you can set it up and get ready for your import. Now, if you notice here, I've got a bunch of columns. Now, you're not going to need all of these columns for uh, uploading. I highlighted in yellow the most important ones. So you've got your date. I love to use internal ID for the item name. Obviously, you could use item name if that's all you've got. If you, you know, handy with Excel and you could do a quick V lookup. I really, really recommend you can set up your internal ID. Uh, we've got our, uh, and actually this is just a little bit out of the way. I should probably, it's a little deceiving. Uh, you've got your account. So I'm going to use an inventory variance account, but you notice I also brought over the internal ID. Again, I really like internal ID. So I'm going to highlight that there. Same thing here. Here's a subsidiary. I brought over the internal ID. I didn't do so for department. Um, no, department is not required on most loads. This demo environment that I'm doing it on, um, it is a required field, therefore I am going to bring it in. Um, we've got location. Again, I'm showing you what location I'm going to use in the system, but I'm using the internal ID, adjustment quantity, an external ID, and a memo field. I kept these two here on hand and available just so that we can see that we do have some inventory. I'm going to adjust these by five, six, you know, all the way up to 13, just in a sequential order so we can see some difference. Now, if you notice I've got a hidden field here. I hit it for a reason and I wanted to show you why um, here and let's unhide it. And it's called line ID. So line ID is a funny one that um, can frustrate some people when they don't <laughs> use it. But basically you tell the system, this is my first line, my second line, my third line, et cetera. All right, so bear with me here. I've showed you the file here, and now I'm going to do the mapping for you and show you what that looks like. So let's save this here. Remember, this is CSV format. Set up, import, import CSV. I didn't create a save. Obviously, once you save them, then you'll have them there for all future ones, as long as you use the same format. Uh, I wanted to show you from beginning to end, so obviously it will take a little bit longer. All right, so when we get open up here, and first thing we're going to do is we're going to go and set this up. It's a transaction type import. Just a second here, and let's go find our inventory adjustment. Okay, and I'm not going to mess with any of the encoding. Uh, we can talk about character encoding in a separate short and sweet. Um, but we're going to do, again, single file, one file upload. I'm not going to get uh, fancy yet with it, and we'll show that in a, another video. I've got my file here. Again, this is a CSV file. All right, get that loaded up. All right, this is going to be an add. Uh, I'm not going to play with any of the advanced settings. Obviously, if you've got uh, a specific form, uh, if you have Sweet Cloud Plus and you want to set what... Um, you want to use, you can do all that here, but I'm just going to go ahead and add and we'll go to next. Now, as if you have used the, um, the import feature before, you know that whatever it can pick up, it will 
uh, go ahead and try to pick up. So I'm just going to do some quick adjustments here to the mappings. Okay, so did a quick pause to do the mapping here, and I will show you how, how I map these here. So a few things to keep uh, to keep into consideration. So when we originally loaded, it mapped as best as it could. It found a count and it said, oh, you've got an account field. This is one of the tribute fields. And it mapped an account. I really wanted it to be mapped to account internal ID, but it's not enough to tell it internal ID. Make sure you go into edit and you choose the reference type internal ID. So you notice I did that for anything that I said with internal ID. I've gone ahead and then edit and set internal ID. Uh, notice on department, because I didn't do that, I just left it at name, as name, and uh, that is my sales department where that's going to hit. Now, here is where I talked about it can get a little tricky. So uh, the, anything that you set here from these columns is basically setting the header level of the inventory adjustment, if you're familiar with what the inventory adjustment form looks like. We can open one up here. It is setting the header level up here. So when we set the account, we set the account here, the adjustment account. When we set the subsidiary, we set it here. When we set the memo, in this case here, we set the memo here. Now, once we start adding line items, that is when we go into the inventory adjustments, adjustments uh, tab. And this is where we select our item, our department, our adjust quantity by, map all of those things. And notice I've got location and memo here again. So here's memo and location, and I can map it to the same exact data points on the CSV, but this is gonna set the location, which as you know is required. And then in this case, I'm gonna put a memo there just because I want to. Um, and notice the line, uh, the line mapping here. So we went ahead and mapped the line. And that was, again, if you look at our file, it was simply a one, two, three, four, five sequential, right? These are all different items, okay? So we're all mapped up here. And uh, as you can you know, tell, some of these are optional, but just showing you some best practices of what we've got. Uh, in another video, we will cover how to do these uh, inventory details and how to use a multi-file to do that. Go ahead and click next. Oh, and look at that. Part of, part of learning here is we completely forgot to map external ID, or I did in any, in any matter. So let's do this again. And I'm going to note there external ID, external ID. Okay, so we made a slight adjustment there to the external ID. I, I'm not entirely sure what happened there, but I just may have. Uh, mistake or mismap that. So let's go ahead and click next. And uh, we've got the import map. I, I named this recently. Uh, this is optional, but we can name it something like if we ever wanted to reference it. So I'm going to go ahead and save one. And there we are successfully imported. And let's go over to our inventory adjustments. Click on this. Let's go by, we can do a similar of ways. I'll go by internal ID. See the most. Recent one. Here, yeah, I believe it's 91 here. Go ahead and click view. And there we have it. Here is the import along with the adjusted quantities. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, all the way through. Uh, you notice on this one, there was a uh, inventory detail, uh, but we had it set to default, so it automatically went through. Obviously, this was for uh, inventory status, so no impact there. But had it been uh, something like a lot or a serial or a bin or anything that is uh, mandatory, then we would have to go ahead and uh, configure that. And that is a multi-pot. But there we are. You can see everything here. If we set it to our subsidiary, uh, we've got it to the right account. We put the memo field, every item, 
there is on our inventory adjustment to the right location. This is what we had on hand previous. I didn't do current value, but obviously you can do that as well. You can set your adjustment quantity and then new values that show up here as well. Um, it's the unit cost and then the department, all that automatically goes to you. I hope this is helpful. Remember that 1AD is very important and make your uh, inventory adjustment files a lot easier. And uh, stay tuned for the next video where we do a multi-file.